Hey guys, this is Mo for Phone Fight, and today we're reviewing the Google Nexus S made by Samsung. Uh, the phone was just recently released, uh, December 16th, 2010, exclusive to all Best Buy locations. Uh, this is the uh, successor to the Nexus One. It is running the latest version of Android software, Android 2.3, codenamed Gingerbread. Uh, this is the latest stack uh, Google, and uh, basically boasting the pure Google experience. Uh, let's start out looking at the physical aspects of the phone uh, we have on the front right over here a front facing camera we have a light sensor and proximity sensor unfortunately no LED flat uh, LED uh, indicator light so if you get a new message or anything you got to keep waking up the screen speaking of the screen we have a four inch super AMOLED screen uh, stunning stunning display this is definitely the uh, main attraction when it comes to this phone down here at the bottom we have the capacitive buttons, the capacitive touch buttons, uh, four buttons, uh, the back, menu, search, and home. Uh, something I'm very disappointed in is how uh, they keep changing the buttons around. Um, I continuously hit uh, the wrong buttons just because I'm used to a different Android phone. I really wish uh, Android and Google would uh, regulate you know, the way the buttons are laid out just so people could know what they're getting with each phone. Uh, also another thing about the capacitive buttons is when you are uh, pinching to zoom uh, or doing anything else, uh, playing a game or what have you, uh, I found myself uh, bumping into these buttons, exiting out of the app, you know, hitting the search button, uh, something like that just because of how flush they are with the screen and sometimes you, you know, uh, get out of there. Uh, on the bottom here we have the USB port along with the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and one microphone. I was a little bit surprised about that just because the Nexus One has two microphones, one for noise cancelling and one for phone calls. Uh, this one they just went with uh, one uh, microphone. The only physical buttons we have on here is the power slash lock button along with the volume up down keys. Uh, nothing else on the top but this little notch uh, to take off the battery cover. You could see here the screen is uh, a little bit curved. It's it's really not that noticeable when you're actually using the phone. It's more of one of those you know bragging things that you have a curved screen, and it's not even really the screen that's curved. It's just the glass that's curved. Uh, we have this little bump on the back, which kind of makes it comfortable to hold. Uh, plastic cover. That's something that's really bugging me about this phone. I already got a few scratches on it, and I I've never dropped it. It just scratches you know up here when it's a plastic cover. We have a speaker right over here. LED flash along with a 5 megapixel camera unfortunately does not record high definition uh, video right now I'm not sure when that will if that will be updated or not let's take this off show you another thing that no other phone has right now that I know of is the NFC chip near field communication this is gonna allow people to uh, basically just hold your phone up to an object up to a sticker you could check in you can pay with your credit card stored on the information of your phone as you see these two little uh, connections right here connect to the phone so it feeds into the data of the phone through that 1500 milliamp battery uh, speaking of the battery, I really wish they would work on the batteries a little bit more. Uh, I get usually around six hours, that's with normal usage, uh, and that's not even real heavy usage. I'm talking just a few phone calls, uh, some web browsing, going into the marketplace, and I get six hours on average. Uh, Another big thing that's a, a big factor with everybody, no uh, SD card slot. So it's got 16 gigabytes built-in storage, 512 megabyte RAM. Uh, it's got a 1 gigahertz Cortex-A8 Hummingbird processor. But that uh, SD card really, really, uh, I don't know, kind of bugged me a little bit. I'm not sure why they went that route, especially since the other Galaxy S phones came with 16 gigabytes and uh, SD card. So I'm not sure why they went that route especially since this is supposed to be a flagship device. The phone is uh, 63 millimeters wide, 124 millimeter high, high and uh, about 11 millimeters uh, thick. It's a little bit thicker than the Samsung Vibrant. Uh, the weight of it is 129 grams. Uh, it's also heavier than the Samsung Vibrant. Uh, build quality is, uh, is decent. I mean, it's plastic. It's... Um, it follows in almost the same design as the Samsung Vibrant. Uh, another thing worth noting is 
it's supposed to have a fingerprint uh, resistant coating over the screen. As you can see, I started the screen out uh, very clean and you could see the fingerprints appear right away. And the thing that bugs me about this phone, especially because it's plastic, the fingerprints are not just on the screen. The fingerprints are on the entire phone. I'm not sure if you could see it. And I, I wipe it away, but the minute you touch it, just because it's plastic, it does appear. Uh, I mentioned the physical, the capacitive buttons, how they move them around. Uh, one thing that, another thing that bugged me is that there's not too many uh, physical buttons. So the only way to wake the screen is using the side power slash lock button. Uh, the overall look of the phone is beautiful. There's uh, there's no question this is a sexy phone. Uh, just I really wish they would have put a little bit more effort into the necessities that people need, like an LED indicator, maybe a physical button down at the bottom just to wake the screen. Uh, also, I did not like how the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack was on the bottom, uh, just because you know when you're driving in your car, I usually put you know my phone in the cup holder to listen to music and it makes it a little bit difficult when both the uh, charging port and the uh, headphone jack is on the bottom of the phone let's get into the phone right here this is the new uh, 2.3 Nexus wallpaper, the live wallpaper obviously live wallpapers take up more battery uh, let's check out the phone app all right, right away it opens up into the dialer as you can see this is a whole new sorry let me clean the screen right here this is a whole new, uh, I want to say color configuration. It's got the real dark keys now. Unfortunately, still no search by uh, shortcuts with the lettering or anything. Uh, you basically just dial the number from there. You could go into call log. This shows you your list of uh, call logs. It's basically just like Froyo if you're familiar. Uh, this is your uh, contacts list, obviously. You just tap that. Same thing as 2.2 pops up your little uh, window right there. And your favorites shows your recent calls and uh, favorites if you add a favorite onto there. Let's go into the messaging app because one of the main things in Android 2.3 is obviously the improved new keyboard. It's a totally new keyboard. Uh, it's it's really going to be, you're going to hate it or love it. I mean, that's how it's going to go. Let's compose the message. Let's look right away on the keyboard. If you notice, the top row now has numbers. That was never there before, and now you could simply hold a letter down and the number pops up instead of having to switch screens. Also, the uh, punctuation marks right over here, they slide over so you don't have to go into the next screen. Uh, to me, it's a little bit pointless, especially if you have to slide over. I love using the question marks and the exclamation points just because it's on the main screen, but if you're going to have to slide over, you might as well hit the, uh, the symbols button just to you know make it easier on yourself. Uh, if you if you look real close, you could see that the keys are now a little bit shorter, and they might be a little bit wider if I'm paying attention right. They're also spaced a little bit more. For some reason, I've been using this phone for about four days. I cannot get used to this keyboard. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm one of the people that's going to hate it. I just can't get used to it. I notice when I type fast, I'm good with it. But when I actually take my time and try to type, for some reason, I'm always making mistakes. Uh, let me try this out. All right, so I put this is Mo from Phone Fight. I got that wrong, so let me. The nice thing I do like about it is this little cursor pops up. Very easy to edit text, especially since this phone does not have a uh, trackpad. So it, you know, I was really worried about that. Also has copy and paste. Uh, they made it a lot easier. Uh, let's go to select word, and right there, selects a word. You can adjust it up. Well, I exited out of there, but you could basically highlight the whole sentence. Uh, let's try something else. This is the new Android keyboard. All right, so this is the new Android keyboard. Let's try it in landscape mode. It's just something with the space bar. It might be that there's, it might be that there's this little edge on the screen. Maybe that's what it is, but it's really hard for me to get used to. I'm not sure why. This is the new Android keyboard. So it's pretty accurate. Like I said, for some reason, when I'm typing fast, it's all good. But when I'm uh, when I'm taking my time, I'm always making mistakes. I'm hitting, especially with the space bar, I'm always hitting a V or a B for some reason, and I'm missing on that, and it's uh, it's really bugging me. 
one thing that I really wish they would have done is gave you an option at least for the old keyboard or the new keyboard. Obviously this is a stock build of Android so there's no uh, swipe or anything uh, available on there. You can go into the marketplace of course and download a new keyboard but I always like things to be stock. Uh, and I'm basing this on what comes stock. I'm not a big fan of the keyboard at all. I wish they would have included at least the old keyboard and gave you the choice, or at least you know maybe added a, an alternate keyboard that you could use. Uh, unfortunately, it's not there. You do have the uh, voice uh, button, so you could just speak to text, but it's just not the same. You need to have a nice keyboard. You might love it. I mean, at first I loved it, and after a while I just it was really getting annoying after a while and I couldn't handle it anymore. Uh, phone quality, uh, my calls were coming in very loud, very clear. I have not had any drop calls. I did have a few weird things that happened to me. I was in the middle of a call and for some reason it left out of the call screen. It took me into uh, basically back home and when I scrolled down the uh, the notifications tray to click on phone, it would not let me click on the phone. So it kept the phone call going. I couldn't get back into the phone app. I would hit the phone button. It wouldn't take me back into it. Uh, otherwise, the call quality, I haven't had any drop calls. I've been using it for four days, uh, about three, four days now. Uh, I haven't had any drop calls. Calls come in very loud. Messaging, I usually have problems with. I'm not going to lie. But uh, this time, with this phone, I have not had any problems text messaging with anybody receiving or sending me text messages. Uh, stay tuned for part two. I'm going to go in depth into the browser, the uh, camera, and the gallery. And also in part three, we're going to go into the music and video player. And I'm going to let you know what I think if I recommend this phone or not. Thanks a lot for watching. This is Mo for Phone Fight.